AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. It is the Matt McNeil Show. Well, the Kirk Cousin era has ended in Minnesota, and uh, I, I, don't, I can't even read the... <laughs> The tone of Michael Brockorp's tweet messages to me as a, this was going happening today. Uh, but he is kind enough to join us today to talk about the 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 end of the Cousins era. Uh, hi, Michael. How are you, my friend? I'm doing better. You were there with me when I needed you. You gave <laughs> me some comfort and solace. Thank you for getting it through. Thank you for helping me through it, brother. No, uh, I'm here. I'm here on the other side. No, well, can I say I'm going to create a new term? I'm copywriting it. It's called the Sydney Sweeney paradox. Okay, so you and I are both, you know, loving family men. But say that you were on your own out one night and you see Sydney Sweeney, the relatively attractive actress, and you say to her, "You know what? I'm going to ask her out for dinner." And you're thinking to yourself, "You know, I'll get something, you know, reasonable here in town." And she says, well, if you want to go on out, you need to take me to Paris, take me to the most expensive restaurant in Paris, get me the most expensive meal there in Paris. You know, you got to say to yourself, well, there's no guarantee this is going to lead to a relationship. It's going to drain my bank account. And would I really be that happy anyway? So I think what we have done is we've avoided the Sydney Sweeney paradox as Vikings fans with Kirk Cousins because there is no way on the planet I'm willing to pay Kirk Cousins what the Atlanta Falcons just did. No, I, by the way, that's a great, a great little setup you did there. I'm a complete. You should take complete ownership of that of that phrase. Look, Matt, I think it was you. We discussed the range. Of, I think in one of the final episodes that we discussed once again with the Vikings not making it to the Super Bowl, we discussed the range. And if memory serves me, I thought you were in close to maybe two year, seventy five, maybe eighty ish million dollars. I think that's kind of where you were. This, I, my mouth dropped because I thought that was a very reasonable take you had as to where the contract would land. When I heard this, I about fell over. And yeah. I, because at that point, I'm like, I couldn't be mad at Cousins. I mean, good for him. The heck of a heck of a deal for him. Oh, yeah. I, no, no, it, it is. I mean, it's, he got, it's four year, 180 million. <laughs> uh, deal includes $50 million signing bonus. I mean, that's big money. A hundred million dollar guaranteed. A hundred million dollars. No, and and to, to my credit, what I said is I said two years at sixty five million. Which you said if we could get him for that in a heartbeat, I think yes. the Vikings were not that far away from us. I think they were at two million, two years for seventy eight million, and I'm not sure how yes. much of that was guaranteed. But you know, come on, it, it, okay. But the, uh, he, I understand what he's doing. I, if you're an Atlanta fan and you think this is going to lead to a Super Bowl, he clearly is only doing this. He's realizing he's got a finite time left in the league. He's looking for his big nest egg. He's looking for guaranteed money, which was a big part of this deal. And he's also got an Achilles, which is not an ACL or an MCL. It's not like one of those foot nerve things. But it is, in a, it is an injury that has, like, think about it, a 30% recurrence rate. And so, yeah, it's it's more likely that, he, if, especially if it's good training, a good surgery, that he's going to be back. But you're taking a huge risk on a 35-year-old quarterback to pay him that much money. And the last I checked, the Atlanta Falcons don't really have the weapons that Kirk Cousins is going to need to basically be able to turn them into the Viking South. Yes, and let me ask you this. This is the, this is the gauge by, I think, whether we should judge this contract. If this deal had been announced in Minnesota, to keep cousins here, what would have the reaction? Been? <laughs> this town, there would have been pitchforks and torches in the street, my friend. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's kind of where it's at. I mean, because I thought you had staked out. I mean, it was you were a little <laughs> you were a little south of where the kind of the Vikings number was. But if the Vikings ponied up this amount of money today for Kirk Cousins, I, would, I probably would have been more upset at them signing Kirk Cousins with this contract than I was initially to the reaction of him leaving. Because once I realized what the dollar figure was, I was like, goodness gracious. I mean, that would have been foolish for the Vikings to do that. And, yeah. you know, God bless Cousins. Great job. He got the money that he wanted. And, and I'm not going to ever uh, challenge he and his agents negotiating style. Yeah. But my goodness, that's a lot of that's a lot of coin there. That's a lot of cold cash. You know, I was expecting I was anticipating. And I don't know if you were as well, but I was anticipating a two-year, $92 million deal. The Vikings are going to keep Cousins, and they're going a lot higher than I wanted to. 
But I kind of was like, all right, that would that's not exactly the easiest contract to swallow, but you keep him in-house. The second you saw the amount of money the Atlanta Falcons are willing to throw at him, it's like, you know, good luck. And, you know, they're... As Vikings fans, sure, there is that chance that all of a sudden it starts the Atlanta Falcons dynasty. Sure, I don't think it's going to. But as well, on the other side of it, I could see the guy in his first regular season game going down again on his on his Achilles, and that's the end of it. And you know, and he's got a hundred million guaranteed, which will cripple that franchise. I mean, Atlanta is not exactly a franchise that makes good decisions either. So it's it is I, I think you're right. The fact that the Vikings said, Well, good luck, Kirk, is if that was that was a good plan, and immediately turned around and got some defensive players. They, they did. They signed some defensive players, players. And again, again, we're coming into the third season of of Queasy and, and Kevin O'Connell here. This is their – they've made a bold decision here. And, and one of the things that I think that's been a central theme, I think, of being a Vikings fan has been that just their inability to, to really break through. Um, and this, this, is a, this has the potential to be one of those defining moments in Vikings history. Uh, this will, you know, this will either be an addition to another book about all the sad things that ever happened in Minnesota sports, or this will be a definitive moment uh, that they will be judged by. And we'll see what happens in this upcoming season. Obviously, the biggest hole they need to fill is in the quarterback spot now, but they did make some additional moves today um, uh, on the defensive side, which were good. Mm-hmm. And so I just, you know, I, I go back to our discussions. I think we commiserated a lot about Kirk Cousins. And so when this happened today, you were the first person I, I sent a DM to. It would have been nice to keep him here, but not at that dollar figure. No, not at, not at that dollar figure. It would not. I don't think we would have felt good about that. <laughs> um, but, but God bless him for getting the money that he did. Um, and, uh, but I don't think long-term that's a building block for the Vikings. And, again, I'll say it just to repeat it. Had that been the dollar figure that had been announced today for Cousins, Oh my goodness! Oh yeah, this Four time would have been lit up. Oh, this would have been okay. I'm going to ask you really quick: how, how many wins does Atlanta have next year? Oh, uh, I mean, they won what nine games? I think they won. I mean, I think they'll they could do. I mean, they could. I mean, they'll do very. well. I mean, they'll they'll make ten plus, very likely ten plus. I mean, they won nine, I think, last season. So it's pre- pretty hard pressed to think that you're going to bring Cousins in, assuming that he passes. Uh, you know, passes you know all the physicals, and he returns to his capabilities. It's difficult for me to think that they win less games than they did uh, last season uh, with Cousins there. So ten plus. I think. How about ten, you? I think ten max. I don't. I think he, they might have gotten themselves one more win, but the reality is, unless you've got someone he can throw that ball to, and you, unless you got a better defense than Atlanta has, you got the Saints and the, the and Tampa there. And you know Carolina is the the AFC and NFC South equivalent of the Bears, so I don't think that's going to be too much of a trouble for them. But I, I, I mean, they need to, you. You've just spent 180 million dollars, 100 million guaranteed, and now you're going to look for bargain basement price guys to put around this guy. Yeah, good luck. You're not going to be able to find that. So, no, absolutely no. So I think it's. I mean, it's really going to be interesting to see what the Vikings do. It's really going to be see what the Vikings do to fill that quarterback spot. Uh, Texans, Jonathan uh, Greenard and uh, Dolphins, Andrew Van Ginkle, uh, the two edge rushers we picked up, and also Blake Cashman, the former Eden Prairie player, former uh, Texans player. He is now back in the fold. And, and, yeah, what this does is, you know, you take that $78 million they were offering him, and immediately you, you dramatically upgrade your defense. Uh, I think you do need a little secondary help there. The question is this. Um, it does seem like they're going to be able to get one of these good quarterbacks out of this draft. Whether they get the good one or Ryan Leaf, we'll have to see. But um, the question now comes in the running game. Do they go out and find, and Patrick mentioned earlier, uh, them finding a veteran running back to come into the game. Do you agree with that? That's their main focus right now is finding a running back and then looking at the draft to get the QB fixed? Absolutely. I think that's the, that's the strategy. I think there's a lot of good quarterbacks the, in the draft, which question is where they go in the draft and what number that they get in the draft, where they get those quarterbacks. This is a very, I think most analysts, I guess we'll defer to Mel Kuyper, but I think most analysts believe that this is a draft, uh, This is there's a lot of good quarterbacks in this draft. And so we'll see where what, where we end up in the draft and, and what we ultimately get. But there's real opportunities here for the Vikings to really move really move beyond Cousins. And, you know, let's not romanticize, you know, Cousins' record here. Yeah. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't 
you know, I think, I think, Matt, I think it's, it's fair to say that I think what made Cousins so likable was he was likable. I think that he really dug into the Minnesota persona. He, he was, uh, he can't, he's got that kind of Midwestern kind of a charm and appeal. He was likable. He was just overall a good guy. But at the end of the day, uh, he left for Georgia and, uh, God bless him. But again, there's, there's, there's a real opportunity for the Vikings. But as he leaves, Let's not forget the reality of Cousins' record. Yeah, it, it, and that's a reminder. At the beginning of last year, there were a lot of people that were saying, "Don't sign him again." You know, yeah, just you know, don't sign him again. He's is he, there. There were already people lining up on that level, and you, you know, he didn't. He got one playoff victory. That was it. I mean, he had two losses, including that god awful one to the Giants. And so, yeah, I think you have to put that in perspective. One last question on this. Um, if in the draft, what quarterback is there one that you're like, oh, if this one can get to us, I'd love that one. I defer to you. What's your take first? You Knicks. go first. I want Knicks. I, I, I think. Do you? Yeah, I watched a few of his games as last year, and I said, you know, the guy's got. He he's you know if he takes it seriously, he's got the arm and some of the accuracy. I think he could pull it off. And and so I you know and I guarantee you what you and I know. I mean, we're kind of armchair guys. I'm just going off what I see more. Better spots of talent would might pick me apart on that, but that's the uh, Bo Nix is the way I was looking at. Yeah, Bo Nix is a, is a it would be a great pick. I mean, uh, I mean, boy, I mean, everyone wants everyone would love Williams, anyone would like Daniels, uh, but boy, Bo Nix I think would be a really that's a good place to land. Yeah, uh, you know, he's you know, at Oregon. Uh, I'm excuse me, Oregon. Uh, he would be good. I don't know where. I mean, I think most people think Bo Nix is. I think he's. I think he's. If he's not top five, he's certainly top six or seven. Mm-hmm. Um, but that would be a good, that would be a reasonable place for the Vikings to land. Mm-hmm. And Bo Nix would be a good compromise. I mean, in terms of that, I think it's tough. I think there's a lot for the Vikings to get in. Again, in a QB dominated draft, or a lot of good quality quarterbacks in the draft. A Bo Nix, I think, in a, I think is just outside the top five range. Uh, I, think it's, I think the Vikings would have to do a lot to, and give up some things. They'd have to give up a lot to get to that top five, and so I think that Bo, Bo Nix might be a really good a good landing spot for for the Vikings. Yeah, that would be a really good landing point. I kind of agree with that analysis. Uh, okay, so let's let's. We, I appreciate it. We 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 we've we've gotten that out of our system. I want to ask you about the flag thing. Uh, so Minnesota's got the new state flag. I've got it flying at my house. It's actually quite a pretty flag. It, you and I talked about the flag before. Not neither one of us thought this was our design. It was, there was other designs that were put out there, but we went through the process with it and it's kind of growing on me. It's, I, I definitely don't think it's, it's a, it's a bad flag per se. That being said, and, and when you look at the committee that was put together, I mean, guys, you know, the, the, just a bunch of liberals pushing this forward. This was a, you know, the, the, just a bunch of liberals pushing this forward. This was a, you know, a, an, an idea where they went and got people across the state, different political ideologies, and they came up with this flag, and that's the one that they have. There is there is this element, and I don't know if it's just because they don't really have a lot of other things that they can talk about, but the, 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 the Minnesota GOP is trying to make this flag into some sort of dividing line. They had an, an incredibly embarrassing rally at the state capitol last week, in, yet they're still trying to push this idea that we should have some sort of state vote on it, which has already been kind of knocked down. Your thoughts on this? I mean, I mean, am I missing something in regards to outrage over this flag? Because the reality is, I just don't think this is the issue that's going to push the GOP over the top. I will say this to you. Uh, I will say this to you, and I've been, you know, pretty pretty straight with with my analysis as best I can down the middle. I think that this flag issue really, really rubs people on both sides of the aisle. I've spoken to Republicans and I've spoken to Democrats. Uh, I will say to you that the flag, for some reason, is just an issue that seems that people, I think, are just, they look at it and it's tough for them to just kind of wrap their arms around it. I think, I don't see the downside of there being uh, in a, a, an election strategy about focused on the flag. Now, people can people can have opinions on on the the current flag versus the old flag but i just have to say for some reason on this flag issue i have just noticed that this is an issue that seems to just not cut across partisan lines because i've spoken about democrats and republicans who are less than enthusiastic about the process now that being said i don't think it's the ticket for the republicans to win the majority 
Uh, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's an issue that – I don't believe it's an issue that Minnesotans are going to go and vote for people into office or out of office because of it. But it's one of those kind of quirky political issues that I think could, in a particular part of the state, really become a little bit of a wedge issue because I've been surprised by it. Um, I've been surprised by just the intensity of it. And, of course, there are people who want the old flag, but I, I also think there's a passionate amount of people who are frustrated with the process that this went through. Mm-hmm. And nothing like Minnesotans to complicate uh, a flag debate. But for some reason, I think from a process standpoint, I think it, it frustrated some people. I, uh, but to agree with support, I do not believe it is a massive electoral juggernaut for an either political party. Mm-hmm. I, I maybe, maybe somewhat of a wedge issue in, in some parts of the state. I don't know. But I do believe that this could be the type of issue that kind of cuts across, but I don't think it's a marquee issue uh, mm-hmm. during the upcoming election cycle by any stretch of the imagination. I think you're take, trying to take advantage of the fact that it's a process that no matter what it is, I mean, just not everyone's going to agree on it. It's what's your favorite ice cream, that kind of a question. There's always going to be a lot of different answers to that. And so there, there was oh, never... Let's going- be clear, Matt. There's one answer on ice cream. It's chocolate. Yeah, it's chocolate. And if anyone <laughs> says to the contrary, then we're going to have problems. You, and, you see bipartisanship right here. But the, the <laughs> <laughs> this, but I will say this. is You're taking advantage of a situation where there's never going to be a 1,000% uh, agreement on the flag no matter what. And so you, and, you, know, you can kind of try to turn that. It just – when you had that rally and you had basically 20 people show up, yes. I mean it was at lunchtime at the Capitol. Not even a lot of Republican politicians came down for that. I that, that I don't think that there's a lot of, especially suburban Correct. districts. I just don't think that this is an issue that they they want to try to ride this into November. Correct, I would agree with you. I don't think it's the type of issue that's going to get people obviously to come to the Capitol uh, and advocate for. Um, and I would absolutely agree with your take. As they say, as someone much smarter than me once said, a camel is a horse that's designed by committee, and so you have you can't get everything to everyone. And so it's this flight process, but it has been it's in classic Minnesota fashion. It's become complicated um, and we'll see where it goes. I, again, I, I think by, you know, I, I don't think it's the type of issue that's going to motivate people to come to the state capitol uh, and stand outside in the cold to try to change. Um, but it's a kind of a quirky issue. And I think there are people on both sides, but just in terms of a mobilizing force, I don't think it's going to be an issue that's going to be on the radar screens of a ton of Minnesotans when they go and vote next year. I think it's a great line, by the way. A camel is a horse by committee. That is actually a, an exceptional line. Whoever gave that to you, give them a lot of credit. Yes. Uh, Michael Broadcorp, of course, uh, find his website. You can find this text. You, we, I don't know. We might be talking to you about Viking stuff before the, the season starts again. And as well, we'll always be touching base with you about politics stuff throughout the entire year. Michael, as always, thank you very much. I appreciate the time. Thanks for being there for me in the immediate aftermath of this news. You were there for me, and I appreciate it. I won't forget it. No problem. Uh, Michael Broadcorp, my friend, uh, we'll take a break. Come on back. Uh, 952-946-6205. It is the Matt McNeil Show on AM 950. Oh, Vikings, let's win this game.